Hello and welcome Exiles. Today I want to talk about one of my new favorite uniques, Rakiata's Dance. This unique two-hand sword you get from the new League mechanic, Trial of the Ancestors, which has a lot of flat cold, a lot of flat lightning, and on top of that has a special unique mod that says treats enemies res as inverted. Now I like this weapon for a few reasons. First off, it's huge. It is a massive sword, and if you use something like Spectre Throw with it, you get the entire huge sword swinging out. I think it just looks hilarious, and I like that for it. But not only that, the unique mod itself, the Invert Res mod, might be familiar because it's on a Mastery, uh, or it's a similar to the Mastery. And the Mastery here is a only a 25% chance, whereas this weapon itself has a 100% chance to treat the enemy's res as inverted. What does this mean? It's quite simple. If the enemy has 50 fire res, it treats that 50 fire res as negative 50 fire res, so on and so forth. Now, the obvious mechanic you might be thinking is, oh, I want to increase the enemy's resistances to get more value out of this. Now, there are a few ways to do it, and the most obvious ways are things like a Dorian's Prototype, a Eye of Malice, a Blizzard Crown, and there are issues with Eye of Malice and Dorian's Prototype, and I want to stress this here because I want to help people use this item successfully rather than pigeonhole themselves into something that's going to be a bad idea. First of all, Dorian's Prototype, the issue with this is it forces you into lightning damage. It has a mod that says deal no non-lightning damage. So right out the gate, you have a weapon that has a bunch of flat cold on it that you're just losing that damage. And I stress this because maximizing one res to 50 versus 90, if you're doing a Dorian's prototype to 90 res, is not necessarily that good of damage. It's the difference is if you have base 100 damage dealing 150 and dealing 190 with 90 res Dorian's prototype, which that takes one, a lot of investment to get your res that high. And then two, although it might be nice defensively because you now have armor that affects your lightning res, and maybe there's some combo where you have start having enemies take a bunch of damage onto your lightning pool. I think it's ultimately a wasted investment when you could have just triple LE scaling and lean into that more than what you have here. So that's my caution against this item. And my caution against the Eye of Malice slot is it only does cold and fire 50% increase, and you're going from 50 base res to 75 in most cases. And not only that, this comes with exposure, with exposure actively works against you. The way it works is if you curse an enemy, if you expose the enemy, the flip res happens after that. So for example, here I inflict cold exposure, they go from 50 res to 40 res, and then they have 50% increased effect of the resistances, which takes them to 60 res. And ultimately that'll just end up with them being negative 60 instead of negative 50. Ultimately, it's a very small damage increase. It only works for cold and fire. And on top of all of that, it has the downside of it's taking your helmet slot. And there's a lot of very powerful helmets that would be better used than this, in my opinion. So I want to caution people against these two items. They might be the obvious go to. You might think I want to lean into increasing monster res. Although that's a nice idea, there isn't a lot of effective ways to do it that don't come with additional opportunity cost of you're just throwing away better gear slots to force in this idea of forcing the rise up when it's not that how much of a damage increase and you're losing all the value of powerful gear slots like your body armor and your helmet. That being said, there is one item that I think actually makes a lot of sense here, which is abhorrent interrogation. This glove specifically says you can't pen enemies res, but now you can apply a elemental wither and this I can actually see using. I think ultimately maybe this would be a better use case than the gloves I have here, which is Calm Spirit. I'm addicted to going fast, zooming around with Berserk, so I kind of, I, I, I am a sucker for it. But ultimately this could probably be higher single target because what it does is it allows me to apply up to a 60% elemental damage wither because you have 15 withers times 4% elemental damage. That's a big damage increase. And this is one of those use cases where this pairs pretty nicely because ultimately if you're going into Rocky Otta's Dance, this frees up the ability to need to invest in a pen and need to invest in elemental curses. You can go into things like Sniper's Mark, Assassin's Mark, and put more of your gearing in towards attack speed, crit chance, crit damage, stuff like that. The one weak side of this weapon is it's very low base crit, so it pairs nicely with something like a Slayer, or you're going to have to fix your elemental crit in some other way with like a Brittle. For myself, I'm doing a lucky crit dance with death. I'm leaning into the volatility support. That's the stuff I'm doing, but there are some workarounds for the crit. You can fix it in various ways, depending on how you're building your character. Anyways, I just want to make this video to showcase the idea behind this weapon and what it does. And of course, I just think it looks hilarious with spectral throw and that's the character I'm working on. I'll give you a little showcase of what this looks like now, in case you're curious of the build I'm working on, I'll, I'll do a build video on it later. But I'll give you a quick little look at what it looks like doing some random map. I guess I could have probably picked my map a little bit better, but whatever. 
I'm doing a Guardian, of course, because I want to try out some of the new Guardian Ascendancy nodes, which I think are actually, uh, I think they're quite good. Um, and it excites me to try out new things. And Guardian got a lot of changes, a lot of things that are new, a lot of things that I think are actually quite good. And I wanted to see how they would work in an attack-based character. But that'll be for a later video. All I can say is, I think the sword is quite strong. I don't think it's gonna beat out a mere tier weapon, but even that being said, it's, I think, perfectly strong enough to go and make a build capable of doing Ubers and most of the end game content, which I think I'll be able to take this character to. We'll see if I'm correct in that or if I'm just outright delusional. I don't know, we'll see. But that's uh, that's kind of the, uh, the idea of the weapon. I think it's a really cool addition to unique weapons and Currently, right now, there's like 100 of them on trade. I just checked. The lowest ones are 60C with bad rolls, but even with a 60C one, you can start rocking and rolling and having fun out of the gate right away. Another cool thing I would say about this sword, and I liked a lot about this, is it's actually required level 48. Heard that right. You could equip this basically in Act 6 or late Act 5 if you're over-leveled, I think, and... <laughs> You can just start demolishing things. It's really kind of funny to have a weapon this strong that early on. So if you want a really kind of fun Axe 6 to 10 experience, Rocky Auto's Dance, it's really OP for that leveling portion. And I can strongly recommend it, even if you're just leveling a melee-based character that's elemental. This is a great weapon to use while you're leveling just because at 48, it's insane. And honestly, it scales all the way into the end game. So anyways, that is my take on Rocky Auto's Dance, the new cool sword that I think uh, you might have a lot of fun building around. I'm having a lot of fun building around it personally, and I hope you guys enjoy. As always, thanks for watching, Exiles. Take care, and peace out.